As we navigate this winter period, Christmas and the new year, I thought I'd share with you some simple thoughts about what it is that you can do to make a difference. And you have to realize that you are in closed family environments, sometimes with friends. And the reality is that many people are likely to be carrying COVID and other viral infections. The truth is, is that without an understanding of the science, it's very difficult to make sense of what's going on. And so I'm hoping to give you some more insights into what it means from a scientific point of view. As usual, there are many things that we can do. And the principle is about giving you as much information as possible to help you to navigate what's going on. Before I start, as usual, remember about disease X. Are you prepared? We're still number one in microbiology. We've gotten some good reviews and hopefully we'll get your support in terms of getting this and keeping this at the top because there is so much valuable information that's there. So when you think about this winter period, remember there are things that you can do that are within your simple control that will reduce your risk as you continue to navigate it. So let me just add to you some of the science, and I'm going to take you through a few slides that will help you understand what I am looking at and why I think it is so important. Here we have this um, human coronavirus structure, and you can see on the left, there is this gray ball with the blue dots on the top, and those blue dots represent the spike protein. And the spike protein, when you look on the right side of the image, you can see a cut section through that same globe of the virus. And the spike protein is still in blue. And they're usually about 25 on the surface of each virus. And any one of these spike proteins can be used to enter into a cell and then replicate the infection. Now, it's important to note that your immune system is usually quite sophisticated and able to handle any kind of viral infection. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that immune system can't be overwhelmed. And when you look a little bit more closely at the spike protein, you can see here that this spike protein in the context on the right hand side of the blue that it's blown up. And to the very side of it, on the right side of it, because that's a spike protein lying on its side, where that's where it would bind to ACE2. That's the most um, common receptor that the virus uses to get into a cell. And the problem with this virus, and has always been, is that it largely can evade the normal interferon response. So people can have it and not be aware. It's a really, really important point. Just because somebody is asymptomatic doesn't mean that they are not infective and not transmitting viral infection. It's a really simple but important point. And that's why in these close environments over the winter period where people are together for Christmas, many people, maybe sometimes 10 to 12 people, pretty good chance at least one person may have an infection. And in the laughing, the sharing, the singing, pretty good chance that everybody will get exposed. The challenge is that being exposed doesn't necessarily mean that this is actually a, a huge problem. So when we look at what happens, you can see on the left-hand side is the virus entering through the nose. It's going into the upper airway. It's binding to the um, cells in the upper airway, causing an infection. And that is a what I'd call a surface or a mucosal infection. The big problem is when the virus breaks through that mucosal immune system and gets inside the systemic circulation, inside the lymph nodes, that's what you see on the right, and those Y-shaped red um, things represent antibodies. And that's where the systemic immune system comes into place to try and fight off the virus. But the truth is you don't want to actually get to that point you would want your mucosal immune system, which represents the walls, to be able to fend off the virus and hopefully protect you. That's where I'm talking about those are the kinds of solutions that we need at the moment. And one of them is definitely about humming. And as I said, you'll get that kind of information as well from Disease X because we talk about a variety of strategies that people have 
used that have some benefit. Nothing is perfect, but everything is a layer on top of a layer. And the beauty about humming, and I do it all the time, in every environment, I just, whenever I think about it, I just start that low hum and that nobody else notices, but it's like adding a wall of nitric oxide around my upper airways and therefore protecting me. The reason it's so important, especially at this winter time, is that after the Christmas and New Year period, many people may be infected and have no idea they're infected. And the reality is this is what it looks like. As you can see on the left, this is Omicron infection. Within six hours, it infects one cell. And that's highlighted by red. The uninfected cell is white. And it binds to the cilia and gets down and enters the cell. Now, the interesting thing about Omicron is that not only does it infect the cell and then spread on the surface by breathing and so on, but it spreads along the sides from cell to cell. And so you can see that within 24 hours, it is converted all of those nearby cells to red. Similarly, within 48 hours, it's spreading sideways as well as spreading in the air. So Omicron is very, very good at evading the immune system. And critically, it's very good at causing infection within a short period of time and spreading it throughout the body. And so it's this kind of situation that you have to be careful of because you would have had a high exposure period in this winter, Christmas, New Year period. And so your challenge is how do you protect yourself and others because of the exposure? And remember, it takes up to 48 hours before the virus starts to spread, sometimes asymptomatically. And this is then what is going to cause what I anticipate is a massive surge in viral infections. Now, this is the important bit. People think that this is going to be about COVID. No, because at the moment, with most people either having natural immunity or hybrid immunity, very often the infection is very subtle. And they don't even realize that they have an infection. But now, this is where it gets complicated. And so when you look at what happens with your immune system, I've got there what I call the army of the immune team. On the left-hand side, the tank represents the monocytes. Just beside it are the neutrophils, where they represent the foot soldiers. Then in green, you have the air force, that is the T cells. Then you have the B cells, that represent the, in the missiles, they produce antibodies. Then you have the NK or natural killer cells, they're like the Navy. And then you have the mast cells. And this immune system is usually quite sophisticated and able to fight off most infections, most viral infections. The problem is, is that with COVID, it has an impact on how efficiently this immune system works. And this is the bit that most people don't get. So when you look at what happens to the immune system after a COVID infection, and you have to realize this is a generalization, it doesn't happen to absolutely everyone in the same way, but the principles are that this is what it looks like. You'll notice that there's a box that is hiding some of your immune cells. The T cells, that means your, um, this is your, your very important um, air force, the antibodies can get dysregulated as well as the natural killer cells. These are absolutely critical when fighting a viral infection. And so these three primarily get dysregulated or suppressed in the context of viral infection plus interferon. And so this is where it gets complicated because very often the symptoms that people get are not necessarily of COVID because suddenly with their immune system almost temporarily dysregulated, what they are then likely to face is the risk of other viral infections. And you have to just look at it from the perspective of how that mucosal immune system works. As you can see at the top is the airway, and you can see the virus entering through the mucus, trying to get into cells. And then just below that pinkish layer, the mucosal layer, that physical barrier, is a host of immune cells. So even if the virus infects the, um, the surface cells, the immune cells would kick in and prevent and reduce infection very quickly. 
But what then happens is in the context of COVID, that immune system is dysregulated. And therefore, oftentimes, the combination of interferon suppression, as well as the fact that the immune system is not working as efficiently, has an impact when it comes to facing other viral infections. That's where it's getting complicated. So people are going to see increased flu, infl increased rhinovirus infections where people are quite sick, increased mycoplasma, increased respiratory syncytial virus, because all of those immune systems protect not just against COVID, but against all other viral infections and some bacteria. That's where we have to get very careful because that's what's likely to make people sick. The only thing I can advise you, other than reading Disease X, to understand a bit more about the science, is to hum. When you go, make sure you sing songs, because singing, humming, all increase the nitric oxide in the sinuses, and nitric oxide on its own, it's a gas, it's antiviral, it will protect against COVID. Again, it's not perfect, but every little thing helps. And I can testify that largely just humming alone can sometimes be very, very effective. A simple trick, because many people are still going to see family and friends. They're still going to be exposed. And it's something that everybody can do. And if you can't convince them on the science, convince them to hum along with you. It will still be beneficial. It will protect you and it will protect them. What a wonderful time this year to be finding reasons to sing together, to hum together, to enjoy music together. That's one of the beauties about the Christmas period. It will not only benefit the enjoyment and the pleasure of the time, but unbelievably, it could actually help to prevent and reduce the risk of infection. And just before I finish, remember, a lot of this information is in Disease X. And please, the link is in the description below. You can join us in this scientific journey, finding ways to fight and protect ourselves against this virus. Remember, this is one of those periods that I am very worried about, the post-Christmas and the New Year period, because that's when we are likely to see a massive surge of viral and chest infections. Let's hope it's not as bad as I am worried about it's going to be. But we should still be prepared, thinking of all the risks ahead. Have a good Christmas. Have a wonderful New Year. But remember to hum. Thank you.